Hello and welcome to game number two between First Departure and New Illusion Esports International. And I say game number two because this is a, a best out of three for the semi-finals for Ghost of Cup number four. First game taken by First Departure. And a pretty entertaining game. And I'm hoping for another entertaining game and perhaps even a game number three because of course Neil Lucian, they want to force out a game number three. Now these two teams have recently faced each other in a best out of three for the... Uh, for the C Online Esports Tournament. And in that best of the three, Neolution was a actually able to beat First Departure. So who knows what can happen this game. Again, a Magnus being banned out together with the Nyx Assassin. It's a Rubik that gets banned out this time for Neolution though, next to a Darkseer. Neolution having the first pick. They have a lot of freedom to pick up some hero that they want to have. Will it be a Bat Rider? Will it be the first pick Templar Assassin, as we saw previous game, but it is indeed gonna be a bad rider. Now Templar Assassin, the first pick for the first departure in the previous game, might not be the pick that they wanna go with, because Bat Rider is a decent counter against her in that mid lane. Anyway. We are um we are here with game number two, as said. Now uh, there are of course two semi-finals, I know. It's a two, yeah semi-finals. There's two of so uh, the other semi-finals is between uh, Zenith and Rattlesnake or RS. Uh, the cast for those two teams for that semi-finals you can find on Twitch TV. Now, if you want a list of all casters, there's also multiple casters for this match. Just go to ghostofgamers.net slash Dota 2 and on the front page there is a list of all the streams and you can find everything that you want there, including the cast for the Zenith game. I know a lot of you want to see that one, but we are seeing First Departure versus, Zenith, uh, versus Neolution and... I'm hoping, like I said, I'm hoping for another uh, entertaining game as we saw last game. His first departure is actually ticking heavily into that bonus time for the first two picks. Will they go for a Shadow Demon this time? Get some support up there? Or will they already give away their lanes like what we saw last time was that first departure? Uh, sorry, Neolution actually with their second, uh, with their first picks. The first and second picks. They had second picks, so the same situation as first departure, first departure is in right now. They picked up two supports, so basically not really giving anything away just yet. And first departure, they already know that they're going to be up against a bed rider mid, probably. Though bed rider is in theory also an off laner if they want to. And it looks like they are really in trouble about what they are wanting to pick up right now. And at the same time, they're also giving the illusion a lot of time to think about what they want to do. So if Neolution now goes for, you know what, we know that their opponents are having a tough time thinking about what they should pick up. Maybe we should be making it even harder on them by making sure they're not going to get any extra time from us. They pick up a Keeper of the Light and the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain as a mid laner is basically a hero that can be up against anything. So it's a pretty safe pick. Uh, very annoying against the Bed Rider still though, but that's, I mean, that's just the way that you have to... Uh, Phantom Lancer. That we have to be, um, yeah. I mean, you know, there's anything that's up against a bed rider is gonna have a tough time. But Queen of Pain should be ne at least decent Dying enough to uh, to not die. We have got a Phantom Lancer being picked up by the Illusion now. Partly that could be because the Keeper of the Light is on the opposing team and they don't want to be giving it to the first departure. But of course, it's also a very good hero to have. Now it does give the option for first departure to still go for a Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon versus the Phantom Lancer is very decent because if you create illusions of the Phantom Lancer, those illusions will be able to make their own illusions. And late game, you could uh, you could actually kill Phantom Lancer with his own illusions, or at least Phantom Lancer's team with the Phantom Lancer illusions. And uh, oh, sorry to hear that this game is apparently not able to be watched inside the game client which is uh i thought it was, should be possible to watch it my, my apologies me well otherwise you're stuck with me well not only stuck with me there's multiple casts for this game as well so uh, you can uh scoop around twitch tv and see if you can uh, find the right one because there's of course multiple games for Ghost of Cup being cast at the same time. Two semi-finals, as said earlier. We have the Enigma being picked up by the Illusion, so they could go into the jungle. They could have the Enigma as an offlane. There's a lot of uh, different 
uh, roads they could be taken with this Enigma, with the Luna being picked up by First Departure, so already going for that carry for themselves as well. And it's actually, I mean, no surprise that Neil Lucian ban out the Shadow Demon the first chance they get, because that's not a hero that you want to be facing if you already have your own Phantom Lancer. Jakiro being banned out there by uh, First Departure. Of course, they know they're still supposed to be a support with that Phantom Lancer, and they don't want it to be a uh, Jakiro. With the illusion, uh, get in the next, uh, get in the next ban. I mean, they already know they're up against the Luna, probably with the Keeper of the Light. Um, they ban out the Naga Siren still. Now we have seen Naga Siren as a support a couple of times before, and I would imagine her to be a support if she still got, got picked up by First Departure. But they just don't want to have that again. I mean, they, they, they're done with that. Even the slightest chance that they would be up against the Naga Siren again. Let's not have that. Let's not have that. Bounty under being banned out there by first departure, imagining that Neolution still needs to go for a uh, a mid or sorry, an offline hero, thinking that Enigma is gonna go into the jungle. Lone Druid being banned out as well. I mean, they faced Lone Druid and Naga Simon in, in the previous game. They really don't want to do that again. I mean, the, there was basically an outnumber situation for Neolution. They were outnumbered in the amount of carries that they had. First departure just had more. Venomans are being banned out there, another carry, and sorry, another support that they don't want to see combined with a Phantom Lancer. Now personally, I haven't seen a Venomancer in a while, unfortunately, in a competitive match. Um, actually, that's not true, is it? It was there recently. But still, I would have liked to see Venomancer. I'm a fan. Let's see that what the support they're going to be picking up. Or if they're gonna be pick up on picking up their offlane first. I mean, Beastmaster is still in the pool. They could go for that again. Did work out nicely in the previous game. Those roars are really nice to have. And of course, it's a great thing to have against the Queen of Pain as well. Not able to blink away. But that would mean that there's two things against the BKB. They have three things even. Because of course, Enigma's Black Hole is one of those as well. And if it's one thing that Luna normally gets first, it's a BKB. But nobody cares if you have a BKB or not. If there's a Lasso, a Black Hole, and a Roar on the opposing team. Now, is it going to be a Beastmaster, or is it going to be another support? Or a first Crystal support? Maiden. It's a support first. Crystal Maiden, a hero that we don't see that much. Though she is, of course, a solid support, but... Um, the reason, probably, that she's being picked up right here... Is... First of all, it's a, it's a nice for harassment, etc. on the lane of Phantom Lancer. It's, it should be creating a pretty safe lane for him, but... More importantly... Um, normally you want Phantom Lancer to get it with the Keeper of Light. Now that's not going to happen because Keeper of Light is picked up by First Departure. But Crystal Maiden is actually one that also gives a lot of mana with her aura. And that might be helping out Phantom Lancer a lot as well. So we'll see if that's uh, what she's going to go for after her first two nukes. Because she is still going to go for her first two nukes. Sand King will be picked up by First Departure. A hero that got banned out in the previous game. And uh, picked up here. I like it. It's a bit of teamfight extra that First Departure has. Uh... We've seen in the previous game how big of a difference teamfight can mean, and the or there's already, of course, an Enigma up on the Illusion and First Departure. They want to have a bit of their own teamfight. A blinking, burrow striking epicenter, a Sand King is definitely some teamfight potential on their side. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And for the people wondering, the Phantom Lancer bug with the um, Quelling Blade is no longer there. So don't worry. And they illusion. They're ticking into their bonus time. A luxury that they have. But the first departure doesn't have anymore. But they will be glad to, to have this time that the illusion is giving them as well. Just to make sure that they also uh, can get some time to think about their last pick. Because right now what they need is probably still an offlaner. Queen of Pain mid, Keeper of Light, Luna, Sand King. On the um, on the safe lane, probably could go for an aggressive tri lane, perhaps, knowing that they will be up against a dual lane maximum because Enigma is probably going to be in the jungle. And talking about lanes, I mean Enigma could be going on that off lane, of course, as well. But I do think that the Illusion probably wants to have that off lane still. They could go for a puck, have that silence up, which is pretty nice against the Queen of Pain. Earthshaker here. But they also could go for an Enigma offline and pick up an Earthshaker. I love it! We're seeing so many heroes that I normally don't see. It's maybe because, uh... Because of... It's my in-game commentary that not there. Let me turn on my mic on and off. Might work. 
But apparently then the game is watchable inside the game client. Ten seconds. An Earthshaker, a hero that we don't see that much anymore. Um, I say that, I have. I noticed that I have said that like now, now three times in the last two weeks, I think, because Wind we've seen a couple service. Earthshakers. There's the Wind Runner, that's gonna be the offlane. But uh, Earthshaker is of course a hero that is giving a lot of control with that Fisher. And... It's actually, if you look at the team fight potential from the illusion, you do not want to get caught in that. Black hole, echo slams. At the same time, you have got an eclipse and an epicenter on the other side with a sonic wave. It's definitely not something to be uh, to be comfortable around because it's it's definitely devastating. Definitely devastating. Oh my god, double Ds. Um, anyways, it's um. I I love I love her shaker. Fishers are amazing. Echo slams are amazing. More importantly. Earthshaker's voice is amazing. Oh, I already switched overlays. Great! Prepare Let's see who's playing what. We have Blah playing the Bat Rider this time. Of course, he was a visage of previous games, so we'll be going into the mid lane. We'll have uh, Harshiko playing the Enigma. It will be Fox on the Crystal Main supporting Lei, who was on the Beastmaster previous time. We'll be playing the Earthshaker. Unfortunately, this time, though, he's going to be playing a support, as in. There would. I'm. It's not something that you see a lot, but Earthshaker offlane. Please. It means he gets fast level six up. I mean, he might. Th nobody can really go on him, and because, um, because of course, because it's Fisher, and he will still be able to get some uh, some experience. But no, no can do it. Will be Enigma on the on the safe lane, and he picked up a soul ring recipe first, so we'll be uh, going for that fast soul ring to just continuously <laughs> be able to spam our demonic conversions, keep the lane in check, get last hits with that as well. Uh, with those illusions and that should be or eidolons I should say and that will be fine Ninja Boogie will be playing the Phantom Lancer no real surprises he is the hard carry of his team and uh, that is actually everybody of the illusion let's take a look at first departure we have Game is Tough playing the Windrunner this game of course was the Beastmaster of the previous game uh, Beastmaster I mean Lone Druid duh Lone Druid uh, we have Main playing the Keeper of Light. Lubby will be playing the Sand King. It will be, again, uh, the Queen of Pain being played by the name that I cannot pronounce, but because of the exclamation mark, it's a strong name, and it's a Queen of Pain. On the mid lane, on the top lane, will be Miracle playing the Luna. And it looks to be like we might actually be seeing a potential aggressive trial lane. Now, Luna should be able to stay alive just fine against, a, uh, against an Enigma. And maybe they are expecting that, that the Enigma is going to be top and then have an aggressive trial and it could definitely work out. Begins. Windrunner is one of those heroes, I mean, I mean it might not be the most um, dangerous hero to see, but she has got such a long range. <laughs> Statement from Lei coming in. Uh, but she's got such a long range that this will be a very annoying trial lane to deal with if this is actually going to be a trial lane. Haste room picked up by the Sand King. And if it is going to be a trial lane and Windrunner is going to be the one that's going to be taking that farm, that means that uh, we're gonna see a very dangerous Windrunner later on. Now she's already a very annoying hero to deal with because, of course, her um, her shackle having great control over team fights. But a carry, semi carry Windrunner is something you should definitely uh, be afraid around, especially if you're a Crystal Maiden. <laughs> And look at this harassment already going through. This is just so much. Fishers will make sure that there's going to be a lot of harassment incoming. With actually Lancelot and Keeper of Light. He can't escape. There will be a Nova as well. This could be first blood. This will be first blood. Ninja Boogie getting it done. Windrun being used by Game of is tough. And Ur Ur Sand King not around there to help his team. And the first blood so fast already going the way of Ninja Boogie. An aggressive trial and all of a sudden is one kill behind. And that's something that you not want to see if you're on aggressive trial lane. As in the meantime, in the mid lane, it is uh, the bat ride, of course, two for two for now, with Queen of Pain four for one. So Queen of Pain so far getting ahead. In theory, it should be the bat ride that, that is getting ahead, though. We'll see if it's going to be continuing that way, as we actually, because of that first blood that Ninja Boogie got, able to be a bit more, um, be a bit more ballsy here, a bit more in front. His team is not around here to back him up, but he is just bluffing that it is. It's, but they know it, though. There's a ward up at the high ground. Is it just out of range or something? No, they see it. They see it. They have to. No, they don't. This is the vision that the Radiant has. This is just on the edge. 
Sorry, we're switching around with vision there, but that ward is not there. As in, it, it is there, obviously, but they don't see it. Double damage. Uh, in the meantime, Ninja Boogie is uh, gonna be able to throw out harassment constantly, and I mean, he's got his uh, he's got his uh, tranquil boots. With, the, with that first blood able to get that already, and he should be able to, to be safe on this lane regardless. I mean, the, it's still gonna be pretty painful what they can harass him with, but he is gonna be able to get himself back to life every, t every time. I mean, burst damage is something that first departure misses here on this uh, bottom lane. Why? Well, not not really true. There's a burst take. And a uh, illuminate, both a nice uh, burst damage abilities, but not enough just yet. Crystal main is still level one, so no aura, aura just yet. Illuminate gonna fly through. Nicely dodged though. It's daytime, they of course saw him charging up, or they heard him even. Because in the meantime, middle lane 10 for 5 versus 7 for 5, so still fairly ahead. Fairly ahead for the Queen of Pain. In the meantime, on the top lane, Luna is having a fun time, or is she? <laughs> 11 assets for her. Definitely not doing bad, keeping uh, on par with the mid laners, as also Enigma is having 11 for 5. Ninja Boogie being forced to last it under his tower, being 13 for 2, so pulling ahead. Even with being ag against an aggressive trial. Now, the thing is. About an aggressive trial lane, and I say this every time, and if you've heard my cast before, you, you've probably heard this as well. Well, one, I'm a fan of aggressive trial lanes because it forces out aggression. Because you have to be aggressive if you're on an aggressive trial lane. You should. Be aggressive. Otherwise, what point is it that you have an aggressive trial lane? Well, there we go, that's better. Leaving Windrunner by yourself. Apparently, uh, thinking, you know what, we can't do anything anyway because that Fisher is there constantly to, uh, to mess us up. So we're just gonna try to uh, throw in some uh, some dust in the face of uh, of lanes elsewhere, and they smoke up. They've got, of course, the burst strike followed up by an illuminate. Will it be Enigma or will it be Bad Rider? Blink away so that Enigma picks up the illusion rune. Has got that bottle, of course, as well, and with the magic stick, knowing that she's up against that uh, Bad Rider. Extra HP uh, thing. So we have got Sand King waiting around. Keeper of Light, same thing, but. They can't really find, it, uh, find an opening right now, not with Vlad just being safe near his tower, and they now know that he's there because the smoke ran out. And they're gonna try to, uh, to stack and pull probably just to make sure that that lane is gonna be pushed back in the meantime. A uh, pulled back rather, because in the meantime lane is pushed. And this will mean that Windrunner is gonna get that experience, which is, uh, I mean for, n for now she's alone. So... Normally, Windrunners by herself aren't getting that fast levels because, you know, she's just not able to be all that much on the lane. But right now, she's uh, she's definitely doing okay for herself. As in the meantime, it's Enigma that's also doing okay for herself. Level 5 right now. I mean, Luna can't really shut him down. Can't really do anything against him farming. Just has to make sure that she herself gets more farm. Maybe trying to deny some, but... That's all. Can't really harass him away. Those Eidolons do a lot of damage. And if she's gonna get caught out by a Malefis... She might actually be the one to die. Especially if Enigma reaches level 6 and that black hole will be there. Eidolon's doing damage while the black hole is going on. Miracle will not be able to survive that. She is just a very low HP hero. That's also why Sand King is of course hanging out here just to make sure that she is gonna be safe. In the meantime, the Keeper of Light has decided to uh, farm some in the jungle. Gonna probably be stack and then uh, throwing some Illuminates. So we do have the bed right at level 6, might be trying to go for something soon. Hello, in Lou Invisibility Room. Invisibility. They of course saw her pick that up, with that ward over there. But that is gonna be, uh... Everybody being extra safe, knowing that there could be a shackle coming out of nowhere. Ninja Boogie actually not being that safe. I mean, he saw that invisibility room being picked up, but he feels like, okay, you know what? I got double walk. I'm fine. Invisibility room already uh -huh. wasted. Exclamation marks comes out because they know that she is back right now. As we have Queen of Pain forcing back uh, Enigma, but it's actually an illusion. The real Queen of Pain is still in the mid lane. Another illusion coming in. Enigma actually being harassed a bit, but he has a black hole, so he is fine. And he's also being helped by an, an earth shaker. So should someone initiate on him, there will be a fissure. And that fissure will make sure that nobody can chase this. And we're finding ourselves in the same position as we had in the previous game, where both teams, they're happy farming right now, they're happy laning right now. 
The first one to probably leave the lane is probably the bad rider or the queen of pain. This mid lane at some point one will feel like, you know what, I'm not getting anything done right here. I need to use my sonic wave slash lasso. And this uh, last two will, will be able to get some kills. There are wards being placed, but I mean, we saw the previous game as well. These teams think alike uh, in terms of wards placement and counter wards. Enigma has to be careful here. One burrow strike, a loose and beam, and he's done for. Ooh, that was just one loose and beam, and he's done for. And you know he has to back off. We do have Crystal Maiden specking her, uh, her um, what's it called? Aura, by the way. That mana helping out Ninja Boogie, of course. Able to throw out some lances. Ninja Boogie himself has got himself a Ring of Aquila, got himself the boots, which we already saw. And Windrunner's still level 4. Well, Ninja Boogie's level 7, so she has to be very careful. At the same time, there's still only one kill upon, of course, upon, uh, upon this game. Ninja Boogie being the one to get the first blood, just like last game, by the way. He was able to get that as well. On his life stealer that time. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, is it now? Yeah, the lane being pulled back. Was being pulled back by the looks of it. And this is the full HP back, uh, Enigma back. Lobby's still hanging around there though. They It looks like they want to go for this. They have a black hole. Fisher going down. Here comes a black hole. Malif is going off as well. Or is there going to be a black hole? Yes, there is. But the Impale and the Queen of Pain. Lincoln scream. And now Lane going to try to TP himself out. But the losing beam coming in, no escape for him. Two kills going the way of first departure. They were ready for that. They so were. The black hole being used. I mean, it looked dangerous for Luna for a second there. And here comes the bat rider, Lasso up on the keeper of the light. But you know that change? Can't attack anymore while the Lasso is going on. Doesn't look like he needs that anyway, though. Picks up the support by himself. Sand King there by himself, gonna get helped by Queen of Pain soon though, knowing that the last two is off cooldown, he might try to jump in, lands the Shadow Strike. There we go, and a Scream, is there gonna be more? There is enough mana for a Sonic Wave, it hits, but is there gonna be enough damage? They need to chase it down, one more hit needed, Flame Break going through, Tower hitting up on the Queen of Pain, and here comes Burst Strike finishing it off, and now Lobby in a lot of trouble, lands himself inside a Sandstorm, already gets cancelled though. It's gonna trip you out, should be okay. There he is. Gonna be just fine in the meantime on the top lane. Bottom lane, rather. A dive that didn't, wasn't really a dive, was an illusion jumping in there. And a boogie out of mana. Miracle. Taking a bit of damage from that lance there, but again, she has got... She's got tranquil boots as well, so she should be fine. In the meantime, Genkin coming up on lay. They know that he is there. They see him. Queen of Pain has got that blink in. And the scream. That's it, though. Get some mana. Chakra magic. Shadow strike hits as well. Another fish will land. Will it be enough though? Shadow Strike might actually be able enough to kill her, down, but kill her off, but she's gonna TP out and he should be able to do that and will be able to be staying, al staying alive with that. Illuminate flying through. Looks like they want to try to push this. They have of course got four heroes in the middle lane. Well, three now as uh, we do see Queen of Pain moving back towards the secret shop. I'm gonna be picking up a point booster. And now moving back to base to get some HP back. So it will be in Aghanims that she's going for, want to throw out her Sonic Wave every single second, every single possibility that she has. A Sand King and a Keeper of Light gonna be uh, Tag Team 101, I wonder where they are gonna go. Ah, they're gonna go towards the career, they have got a smoke now. Looking to be going towards the bottom lane, maybe Queen of, or sorry, Windrunner still hanging around there, level 5. Gonna have a tough time because uh, these are pushing the lane out quite hard actually, here comes a new Creep Wave. But they're coming, com coming from the side, and they're gonna try to kill off the, uh, well, either the Phantom Lancer, not really that much chance, though. They do have a Sentry Wards, just picked up with the Courier, as we saw. Well, Crystal Main might be a better target. And they aren't spotted by the Radiant just yet because of that smoke, and also because there's just no wards up, so even if they didn't have the smoke. They do realize that Earthshaker's there, since Dyer's the smoke was already popped off by the sa on the Sand King. Here comes Keeper of Light, though. Sentry B, place. And always there. Nice frostbite. Boogie coming, gonna come back in. Here comes the Queen of Pain though, and it is Keeper of Light that will be the one to go down, or will he? He got the tower instead. It's also nice. The Crystal Mane still dies to the Queen of Pain. Burst Strike hits on Boogie. Cannot double walk out. Will be going down. Epicenter even being used for that, even though it wasn't really needed. Double kill going the way of Queen of Pain. And Earthshaker just, you know, sitting there doing nothing. No Fisher. He's still level 4 now, of course, for an Earthshaker. Levels are all nice. 
because of that uh, Echo Slam. But he's not too sad that he's level 4. I mean, his most important feature is the Fissure. It is very simple. And he has got that already, so he is fine at level 4, apart from being that he's very squishy. At the same time, he's now getting some solo experience, so he will be happy with that. He has to share it soon again with Ninja Boogie, though. More importantly, he has to back off, because Ninja Boogie does not want to share. Because he is a Phantom Lancer. So far, this Queen of Pain has been in 5 out of the 6 kills on first departure. She hasn't died yet a single time. All that being said, there's a lot of people that haven't died yet on first departure, because there's only 2 kills going the way of the illusion so far. With only, uh... <laughs> well, actually, that was twice to keep from light dying. He's the only one that died, and he died twice. Poor guy. One's from the Bat Rider, one's from the from Ninja Boogie's uh, Phantom Lancer. And we're gonna be seeing 2800 gold up on the Miracle. She's still gonna go for BKB, I wonder. Of course, that, that uh, Lasso and that Black Hole will go through BKB, but at least she won't be able to take any damage then. Like, you'll still be in the last suit, but for example, the flame a firefly that's under your feet won't be doing damage to you, so that might actually help. Same thing goes, of course, for the, uh, for the black hole. At least you won't be hit by an echo slam should it come inside, if you're inside a black hole. Or a fissure, for that matter. But no. Wow! Luna! Ah! Oh! Shadow Blade! I like it! Gives her an opportunity to sneak up on people and get that uh, eclipse in. And she's probably not going to show that she has it until she actually has it complete. Just to have that element of surprise. And she almost has got that 14 on the gold for the claymore. I love it. Yeah, I think she still should go for VKB though later on. But, you know. We'll see if she's going to go for that. So we have got the uh, Bad Rider back in the mid lane. Let's take a look at the net worth, by the way. A bit more important right now. So Queen of Pain highest on top of that. No real surprise. She's been getting a lot of kills. Uh, second highest, though. Something that is going to be... I mean, we've seen this. We have seen this before. Phantom Lancers. They're like... like Well, there, there's two ways to describe them. I prefer that he has the, uh, the Broodmother effect. So at some point, if you leave him alone... You of course, I mean, if you're first departure, you try to take the game before this Phantom Lancer is fat. But... You also want to try to, uh... Well, you know, you, you don't want to get towers taken down. So, Broodmother effect. You leave him alone because you realize you can't really shut him down that much anyways. So you might as well just try to get your advantages elsewhere. But if you leave him alone, he will at some point push your towers. Because, you know, those illusions can do it by themselves at some point. And he picked up one blade of leprosy secretly. I'm hoping that he's gonna go for Manta style or no, 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 that's not true. Manta style and um, the fusel blade are pretty standard, actually, up on Boogie, up on the Phantom Lancer. I don't really have a favorite item on the Phantom Lancer purely because I'm not really a fan of the concept that he uh, that he uh, portrays in uh, in the game. Late game is just too 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 much, and there's no Shadow Demon to counter him either. They've got the Sonic Wave, of course, and they need that as well, just to clear out those illusions constantly when they keep coming. But yeah, Broodmother effect. <clears throat> and he is pretty damn farmed also. He's gonna go for, uh, well, like I said, for a man Sour or for the Fusilator, both preferably for him. So in the meantime, we do have an Echo Slam up on this Earth Shaker. We're taking a lot of damage from that Illuminate, but we'll be careful anyways. Only thing that he has to do is at some point walk in and, and slam, and then that's it. Oh, I'm Fisher if he wants to, if he can. They know that your shaker is low. Queen of Pain might actually decide to blink in because if he, she can blink in and get the kill, and she knows it too, she's gonna sit ready. Echo slam though, but yeah, he's still dead. Or is he? No, it is actually the Queen of Pain that drops Hardly two supports, killing off the greedy Queen of Pain. Frostbite there, Fisher there, Echo slam there. They were ready for that. They were so ready for that. Blink in from the Bat Rider because he has that Blink Dagger. Oh, Keeper of the Light. Are you gonna die again? Yeah, he is. Yeah. So that is Bat Rider getting his uh, second kill upon the Keeper of the Light.
In the meantime, on the top lane, Phantom Lancer is able to kill off some people. Might actually go down though, being dusted up. There's no mana left up on the Sand King. He can use his magic stick though, should be using it and burst striking afterwards. He is not gonna do it. Why is he not doing that TP out from Ninja Boogie? Should be in time. And that is actually, I didn't get enough mana from that anyways. My bad. But that is uh, no kill for the Sand King and a kill still for the Phantom Lancer, of course, picking up the Windrunner there. As an invisibility got picked up by the Bat Rider, so that means a free lasso without having to blink in. Only 26 seconds before it's off cooldown again. And that means that he can lasso and then blink out with the target that he has on him. And yeah, at this moment, I do think that, I mean, Windrunner is kind of not going to be able to do anything against that Phantom Lancer anyway. He should just try to get some farm up and try to be a bit more of a nuisance to the game, because right now she is just there to counter push. And while that is nice and all that, they can't really fight anywhere else without her. They need that shackle, they need that control. Because of course they've got the burrow strike. But that is about it. What's going on? Black hole up on Miracle. He's being invisible though. Shadow Blade being used, but the dust up is already there. Burrow strike up on the Enigma though, getting shackled, getting killed. And that is game is tough. Being a meaning to this game. Frostbite's still there because Crystal Maiden comes in. She's by herself though. Has to be careful. There will be another Shackle in three seconds if she gets it. There is an Earthshaker as well though. Fisher is gonna land. Er Windrunner cannot escape that one. Still has plenty of mana. Will be able to land a Shackle. Latches Bat Rider to a tree. But first departure Lobby still setting in flames. Girl strikes his way through. Will go down. Flame Break going through. Crystal Maiden one away, away, away from dying. Will drop. And the Shadow Strike now up on the Bat Riders. Here comes Luna as well. Out of mana, but that doesn't matter. Queen of Pain blinking forward, landing a screen. Getting the kill. Four kills for the price of only one Sand King going down on the side of first, first departure. First departure. Getting the, the fight that they needed to have, but this is the price they'll pay. The Brute Mother effect. Tier to Tower getting a fortification. And they will. Uh, whoa! Miracle! What are you doing? Holy crap, has to be careful, Shadow Blade just in time. And that's an Infusal Blade being ready on the Phantom Lancer. In the meantime, on the side of uh, Neolution, this is the first tower that actually drops. And more TP's incoming, they want to get him, Epicenter being used for that as well. Is he gonna try to get away? Dust being popped, they know where he is, they know where they can find him. Is there gonna be enough mana to take him down though? Power Shot misses, there's a drop, Ninja Boogie trying to run himself away, will be able to do so. Is purging himself from something, and there will be, uh, uh, well, purging himself from the dust. Can double walk again in 12 seconds? Need those 12 seconds of Shackle is gonna latch, and that should be the end of him. Another Burrow Strike will do the job, and that is Lobby picking up the kill for that. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. In the meantime, tier 1 tower getting pressure done. I mean, so far the only tower that has gone down is the tower on the bottom lane for Ninja Boogie, of course, but this could be the next tier 1 tower Dyer's dropping. Top tower. Is under attack. With those Eidolons doing massive amounts of damage, because it is level 4 Eidolons. Another invisibility for the Bat Rider here. Another free lasso. Top tower has fallen. Queen of Pain and uh, Miracle have to be careful here. Bat Rider's probably gonna be going for this. Blinky and Lasso. Shadow Blade, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna be enough? Dust being popped, so no Shadow Blade for you, but sh oh, Sonic, Sonic Wave still going through. Earthshaker at least going down. Can he get more though? Or can he get away still? Lands another screen. Frostbite from the side. Hello there, Blizzard. Illuminate going through. It's a bad part that still drops. Burrow Strike coming in up on the Crystal Maiden. Malefice on the Sand King. Now she not chase, and it's Crystal Maiden that might be getting away. Won't be able to do so though. Buyback from the Bat Rider wants to be here. Teleport's actually mid. Probably not something where he wants to be. At the same time, where is he? Oh, there he is. He cannot, he cannot blink anymore. He gets Burrow Strike and he probably will go down, but that should be uh, should be death. Shackle will latch and that should be a death. Malefice, not gonna save him now. Another kill going the way of Sand King. He's not got three kills on the board, definitely not bad, but you know, Brute Mother Effect. Hello, Boogie. Uh, should be, uh... Yeah, should be maybe some damage to the tier 3 as well. Unless they're gonna TP back. Then your boogie just backing off. Has got a defusal. Let's see what it's gonna go for next. If it's actually gonna be a Manta style. Link in Lasso. Queen of Pain. The target this time will be a slam. Fisher will hit still on the place where Ninja Boogie. Or sorry, where, uh, where, where Queen of Pain TP to. Oh, that name sticks with you, doesn't it? Oh, Scream. 
Is this the right choice? I don't think so. Flame break, echo slam, queen of pain, rump jumps into her death. Dies. Earthshaker picking up the kill. And give some extra gold to, uh, to him. And he's almost got his blink dagger. Now that's gonna be dangerous. And that's definitely not a bad timing for him, having a 23 minute blink dagger if he gets that. He already has his mana boots. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Hamel the Dominator picked up by Luna. And they're gonna run into a crystal main. Okay, this is not good. Shackle, not lasting power shot. Crystal main. Yeah, you know. If you find a solo crystal maiden in the jungle, it would be bad if you didn't kill her. Especially if you're with four people of your team. Looks to be like they're going for the tier 1 tower. Last tier 1 standing on the side of the illusion, they realize the time is of the issue. That there is some pressure being put on by a ninja bookie who's no longer on the bottom lane. Decided to pick up his next level of diffuser blade. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And tier 1 tower actually being left alone as the exclamation mark come out on the middle lane. Luna having to shadow blade to get himself away from this bat rider right here. Bat rider was of course Radiant's going for that fourth staff. Is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. We do have uh, the tower still being picked off though. Those eidolons might be trying to deny this. If they're gonna be split up soon, if they're gonna be getting more eidolons soon. No TP in from the bed, right? A blink in, wants to go for the Keeper of the Light. Shackle still hits, so and a power shot. Keeper of Light should be able to be saved. We'll be able to land a man leak up on Lava, but there's a black hole. No interruption because the Shackle was a cool, but he actually walks right into it. Still, Malefice up on the Keeper of Light. Keeper of Light uses stick charges, but mean. Blinding light, how is he still alive? Creep is out, now will be dead. There we go, but Bad Rider dies as well. The Windrunner's power shot doing that one as Burrowstrike comes in from lobby. Can they do something? Yes, they can. Fisher, yeah, you dead. It is Boogie that comes in to uh, take the kill for that one. That should be the start of a push in for maybe a tier 3, because the tier 1 and tier 2 are already dead. Uh, Boogie will just continue by himself, actually. And uh, once again, for the people that joined since uh, since we started this game, this is game number two of a best out of three for the Ghost of Cup number four, Ghost of Cup Asia, that is. And we have, of course, got first departure on the dire side, taking on the Illusion International for uh, the semifinals. The other semifinals are still going on right now as well, I believe. It's Zenith versus Rattlesnake. You can find those. Uh, uh, the streams for that game up on Twitch as well. If you want to check out all the streams for all the semifinals, okay, there's two semifinals. But if you want to find out all the streams, there's more than just two. There's uh, multiple inner streams for both games. You can go to uh, gozogamers.net slash Dota2 and you can find all your streams there. As we have got uh, this tier one, last one standing for first departure. Being uh, harassed quite, uh, to quite low HP. And a smoke off for a Bad Rider Earthshaker Blink combination. Illusion Rune activated for Queen of Pain might be able to bait something up, but sending both in kind of says what, that there is illusions, that, that these are illusions. And especially since they don't um, pop off the smoke. They know exactly where they are though, walking past that ward. Blink in last. Oh, come on, Keeper of Light. He is being picked on, I swear. You know, that's like the fourth time he's been lassoed. Fifth kill for the Batrider. Both central wards down, but no wards being taken down. I like it. Radiant structures are fortified. In the meantime, the pressure came out again on the bottom tower. It will be denied, but it will still be going down. As in the meantime, uh, it's uh, Malefus on the Queen of Pain, who should be careful here. Actually, blinks away. It's good choice. Good choice. That the Fisher still hits on the on the wind runner there. Can't run herself away. Sonic wave on the side up on the Enigma, who's trying to keep himself out, but the power shot from the side from Game is tough. Who get the kill? Can they find more? Earthshaker being very low on HP. We'll be able to blink away soon, though, as Sand King somewhere else picks up Ninja Boogie, probably with an epicenter. But we're watching here. We're watching Queen of Pain trying to get himself away. Is there gonna be more? Yes, Frostbite. Queen of Pain, trouble. Will she be able to blink still? There's a blink. And she's gonna try to TP. We'll be able to do so. Shackle allowing her to do so. Oh, no TP for you. Or is it gonna be still enough to blink away? Bottle Charge is helping out. Earthshaker came, of course, they're blinking in. Another Frostbite. A flame break, and she won't be caught by the Keeper of Light, but another blink will save her life. As Windrunner was already long gone from that one, and it was actually Ninja Boogie indeed that died on this top lane, Earthshaker, so Earthshaker Sand King, using his epicenter to do so. A worthy epicenter. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And that was overall good uh, good fights for first departure. I mean, yes, they saw their bottom lane tower again denied them, but again, yeah, again denied to them. 
But uh, overall, good fight. Killing of Ninja Boogie, probably the biggest thing there. Well, not even using that many resources to do so. I mean, yeah, an epicenter, but that's good. Epicenters can be used just for that kill. As in the meantime, we of course also got the um, Boogie not doing that bad on farm either. I mean, he's second highest. It is still Luna that's highest. Luna got herself a Manta style, but it's a heart that's going to be up on the Phantom Lancer. And if you combine or if you compare Luna versus uh, Phantom Lancer late game, well, that game is going to be in the hands of a Phantom Lancer. I'm sorry to tell you. What's with these exclamation marks all the time? As if these people can't say say where they mean people. Exclamation works everywhere. Is there a gem of true sight? Yes, there is. Mean has it. I'm not sure if that's the right one because he seems to be the target of last suits all the time. Hello, Crystal Maiden. Bye, Crystal Maiden. The ecstasy of agony. Thank you for your contribution to this cast, Queen of Pain. As uh, we're seeing a haste rune, no, no, this is not a haste rune, this is very fast Lena. Wow, she's fast! With that uh, shadow blade up. She's already the fastest hero in the game, look at that, man. This, she could kill this with an eclipse, but he's actually gonna TP out. Oh, oh, oh! Cancel TP! This could be the opening that they wanted to, unless they uh, realize that there's more there. Fisher coming in, Burrow strikes to hit so and that should be Nurse Shaker going down. First one, can they find more? They've got five here on this top lane, Ninja Boogie and... Hershiko trying to get himself away. We'll be able to do so. Ninja Boogie decides, you know what? I just want to farm. I'm going to farm bottom instead then. As, uh, yeah, Hershiko is just going to TP himself towards the jungle and then, or blink himself towards the forest and then TPing out. And they're going to count toward that one. Yeah. It's like these people can't communicate with anything else but exclamation mark. I like it though. I mean, it means that they're very active in this game. You have to be. Uh, like Ghost of Cup is is it's not a cup where you don't get anything and you win, no. There is a, there's a one K um dollar prize, I should say. I was gonna say gold, but that's of course not true. One K dollar prize. First prize gets five hundred dollars. Second prize three hundred. Third prize two hundred. As we have got the um Bling Dagger up up on the Sand King. So he's doing nicely there. He's a, he's a happy Sand King. He might not be as happy as your Shaker who had the Blink Dagger a while back already. But he's still happy. I used to compare Earth Shaker to, uh, to Sand King a lot. As in when I started playing like same type of heroes. And they actually still... I mean they kind of need the same. They want to Blink in Echo Slam, Blink in Epicenter, right? Looks like Tier 1 Tower, which, which is within the Nye range by the way. Might be the target next. Dyer's Smoke up for Enigma. Fortified. Fortification for the dire structures. I wonder why. Awkward. Two deniable towers there. And they're gonna be fighting here, but it's gonna be too late for the tower. Dyer's tower will drop tower. before anything else. Blink in, and the kill's still there for the Enigma, though. Black hole gets interrupted because death for the Enigma. Mana blink, mana leak upon the bad rider flame break. They wanna try to go for this. Is there gonna be more, though? Echo Slam is still there if you want to. Blizzard! Hits on three, but he was still crystal made that died. Bed Rider died as well. Shackle, Legend of the Earth Shaker. Thou shalt not cast, I shall not do anything. Four heroes dead. First departure on the move. And Ninja Boogie can't really do anything here apart from just making sure that the tower will go down in the top lane. And it will go down, but as will the tier two tower middle. Can they get more now? Bed Rider buys back. And they need to stop Phantom Lancer now. And it will be Miracle who TP's top first. Like, it's okay to trade tier 2 for tier 2, especially if you're gonna get 4 kills on the boot. But you have to be so careful. So careful with that Phantom Lancer hanging around there. We haven't really seen a Roshan kill just yet. This could be an opening for uh, Departure to try and do that. Yeah, as said, this is game number two of, uh, of the best out of three for the semifinals from Ghost of Cup Asia 4. And uh, the first game was going to first departure. So if Nea Lucian uh, managed to make this to take this game with, of course, Ninja Boogie on the lead with the Phantom Lancer, then we will see game number three. As uh, we will also see an Echo Slam. <laughs> they really don't like the Queen of Pain. Last two up on Queen of Pain as well as here also comes a Burrow Strike again. An epicenter being casted as well. Queen of Pain though will still go down. The epicenter got cancelled. 
And there is no escape now for Lobby as he will also be the one to drop Queen of Pain or Sir Crystal Main coming in there taking the last hit. And that is uh, gonna be four heroes on the bottom lane, four in the illusion, and they're pushing onwards. But in the meantime, Ninja Boogie is illusions trying to take down Miracle. No uh, invisibility for him there, gets a mana from Mean, able to do that. Oh, the illusions, Mean! Runs! We'll be able to run. Such painful illusions. As the push comes onward, they're gonna go for a split push. Ninja Boogie on the mid lane, the rest of his team on the bottom lane. Illuminate, of course, there to try and push everything back. Lasso blink in, and this game is tough. That gets pulled in. Can he survive that encounter? Eclipse coming in as well. Black hole being casted while the Eclipse is still going, though, and it's Enigma that dies. Well, Bad Rider gets away on 17 HP. Crystal Main is not so lucky. Earthshaker dying as well. Luna triple kill miracle on fire. Who needs a BKB? You just kill people before they kill you, right? That's the way it goes. Ninja Boogie still alive, of course. Push in still happen a bit. Tower down to half HP. But they managed to force the force the rest of the team back. 3,400 gold up on uh, Luna. Well, there was 3,400 gold until she picked up an Eagle Horn. Sonic Wave only hits on creeps and illusions. With the real Phantom Lancer back on top lane. Has himself a heart, has got 1,600 gold. I would actually not be surprised to see Phantom Lancer pick up Boots of Travel at some point. Would be a great one to have, as Roshan is being taken down by the Dire side. First departure, gonna get that one secured. And that's the Aegis going the way of... Oh, I thought it was Miracle that was gonna pick that up. He actually picked up his Butterfly right now, but who's... There we go, Queen of Pain. I'm gonna be going for a Sheepstick, most likely. As uh, the gem is still up on the Keeper of the Light, or is it on the Windrunner right now? Okay. <laughs> He tried to force top himself up the high ground. Can't do it though. Power shot will give the vision anyways. Nice try though. Nice try. BKB being built up by the Enigma. She's been uh, interrupted by the... Uh, by Well, by all sorts of stuff actually. Uh, the last couple of black holes that he casted. But doesn't want to have that. So BKB is the right choice there. There's uh, really nothing that they can do against that black hole. As we have got Sand King. Just uh, cleaning out the waves. Caustic Finale doing a big job there as well. As we do have the Boots of Travel, but it's on the Bad Rider that has them actually. Is there also gonna be Boots of Travel up on him? No? He bought a Yasha, so it is gonna be Mata Sal next. We do have Queen of Pain being invisible right here. They realize it's there though. Sentry ward, right there. Sorry for the cat. He just woke up. Wants to have some attention. That's how cats work. Anyway, let's take a look at the graph, because I haven't done that for a while, but that's also because it's really, really even. There is a 2k gold advantage for the parcher, but anything can still happen. Experience graph is going to be a bit more in favor of the parcher. They have been getting the kills lately, but. I, I wouldn't read anything into that one because we all know how a Phantom Lancer can work. And Ninja Boogie is making it count. 1500 gold in his inventory and his uh, army of illusions is pushes, pushing on. And the pause comes out because there's a disconnect from lobby. It makes me able to drink some water by the way, so that's good. There we go. That's better. It sounds really sad, doesn't it? But yeah, I mean, as as long as this uh, Phantom Lancer is gonna be keeping push, keeping to push on, keeping the pressure on, there's constantly gonna be people being forced to TP to base to make sure nothing dies there. Make sure their tier three tower is gonna stay up. And we've seen it in a game like two days ago, I believe, where a Phantom Lancer just sent his illusions. I mean. Their entire the entire team then of the of the opposing team of the Phantom Lancer was constantly forced to be there to just deal with illusions alone. BKB up by the Enigma, as Crystal Maiden has uh, got herself a uh, a buckler. Quite interesting to see that she is the one going for that uh, mechanism. It's gonna be a very late mechanism also though, uh, but they kind of need that. They need the mechanism. They need the pipe. 
just to deal with the team fight that departure has even though it's not as much as the black hole echo slam combination from uh, Neil Lucian that epicenter is not to be uh, to be underestimated if they get it off of course which the last time of course wasn't the case and we're, we're seeming to be uh, seem to be at an impasse Because uh, we are both teams kind of content of farming. Departure wouldn't mind fighting, but they don't want to take a 5-on-5 five five team fight. Like, they want to be having the lanes in their favor, which is pretty tough to do if you're up against a Phantom Lancer. Uh, they want to not have that Enigma having a good position for a black hole. And they don't really want to see that, that uh, Phantom Lancer in a fight either. So they have to be really careful about positioning, about when and where they fight. But they do want to fight probably, because they can't wait that much longer. Because this Phantom Lancer is going to be too farmed. If they wait that much longer, especially since I do think that, yeah, the Aegis is, is still up. But it's going to run out in three minutes or so. Two and a half minutes? Something like that. Sheepstick now up on the Queen of Pain. Another reason to start fighting as Windrunner picked up her own uh, ultimate orb. So we're going to be going for Sheepstick as well. And the smoke is up. I'm looking for a target, but everybody's on the bottom lane. And the bottom lane is where the Phantom Lancer is at as well. And like I said, you don't want to fight against that Phantom Lancer. So you have to be really careful there. Sentry Ward is up there, they realized that, so decided to walk uh, the other way, I believe. Realizing that the uh, the Sentry Ward doesn't have that long of range of vision. So they see the Sentry Ward before the Sentry Ward sees them. And now they uh, give it away. Blink in, Sheep, and Nygma, I think you're gonna... Oh no, he blinked! KP is blinking! And that's gonna be him still going down though, but the BKB was there, the Black Hole was there, it's only one, already one down. Now Queen of Pain gonna be the next one to go down, just stands there hitting stuff. He has an Aegis anyway, Earthshaker going down still as well on the side of the Illusion. Queen of Pain will be able to blink away, ooh, was that a bit of a wrong blink there? They know she's there, there goes the Lance, Queen of Pain cannot get away, needs to blink right now, gets it as well. Just in time, as in the meantime it's uh, Luna that tried to do something on this bottom lane, but can't uh, do enough anymore. As in the meantime, she has to TP top again because the push comes in. Butterfly up on Luna, by the way. They should have killed. If they killed that Enigma off before he got a BKB off, that could have been a whole different ballgame. Because that black hole gave a bit of momentum to uh, to Neo Lucian. With the flame break also coming in, almost knocking the targets out of the black hole. They have to be careful with that, that it actually doesn't do that. But it didn't. It didn't. It knocked him just back into a l other. Uh, place of the black hole but again they have to be careful with that or shaker still managed to use his echo slam before dying though which is nice hello satanic luna is getting to the point where she is uh, she's just i mean she's almost done with the items she might be going for uh, for power treads first still just getting that instead of the tranquil boots Is it gonna be an Eclipse to try and take him down? No. This is just right clicks. Oh, he doesn't get him because TP comes in. Blinks in. Manta style. And he doesn't have a black hole. This is trouble. This is Enigma dead. Wicked sick miracle. Here comes the last two, but it's on an illusion. And he's gonna be called back, but he can't though. He is visible. They see him. And they're gonna get him too. Epicenter though coming in. They wanna get Ninja Boogie. There's no mana left. A Miracle. Another burst strike. Hits on Ninja Boogie from the side. He's Bly hitting on the Queen. Up on the Luna. The Luna dies. And now also the Sand King dies. Double kill going the way of Ninja Boogie. Phantom Lancer in action. But here from the side comes the rest. Luna buys back. Sonic Wave over the top. Gem of Truth drops as the Bat Rider goes down. Gem of Truth picks up by the Phantom Lancer though. Who goes to the next target. Echo Slam whiffs. Because Queen of Pain just blinked away. Queen of Pain trying to get away one more second until we can blink again. In the meantime, it's Keeper of Light. I won't be so lucky. We'll be dropping there. Queen of Pain landing another hit. We'll be able to take down... Oh, or not. Was that a defusal blade up on teammate? No. Sentry Ward is there. Miracle. Trouble. Shackle. Latches. Is it going to be in time? Bad Rider being turned into a piglet out of play for now. They still see where Ninja Boogie is going though. Luz and Beam hitting on top of that as well. They have got a Gem of Truth or do they not? They should be having it. Yes, they do. And that is going to be a nice shackle and a kill and a buyback and a TP back. Here comes Ninja Boogie again. 
Who wants to get revenge? Doesn't get it though. Would be going into a three on one. That's a bit too much right now. We, we have the first departure. Getting a great fight for themselves. I mean, you might say yes, Luna died. But Ninja Boogie died too, and that's the one that you want to shut down a bit. No more buybacks. Next fight might mean racks for them. Um, on both sides though, because if Ninja Boogie's not in a fight, he can push out to go for Rex. It's still gonna be very dangerous. But that is gonna be first departure, taking a great fight, and it was really unintentional, of course. I mean, it wasn't really the team fight that Neolution was aiming for. The black hole wasn't even. They didn't even have a chance. Enigma, he died first, then he got back and got shackled, and he died again. That is not something that you want to be seeing if you're playing an Enigma. You just have not not having a fun game right then. Uh, but we are gonna see uh, pushing from the bottom lane. Ninja Boogie being supported by three. Can they go in though? Do they really want to take this team fight? They, they can think the same way. They have got no buyback ready up on the Luna. They still got the black hole. If the Enigma is actually there. And she's not. Oh, hello. Oh, the solutions. Thank you. This is what I'm, what I'm talking about though, this this tower, I mean, I think Ninja Boogie was close to it once, in person. The rest of the time this was just illusions doing the work. And we saw previous game how much of a menace illusions can be. Um, yeah, how much of a menace illusions can be, I said it right. 3200 going up on this Phantom Lancer who was just happily farming. Net worth still highest for the Luna though. Butterfly there, boots of travel ready, so that's the one that she got next to the, or after her tranquil boots. Level 25, uh, could sell her TP scroll, cause you know she's got boots of travel. So she will uh, bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, she will be able to get something else, might be going for this guy though. Getting that Aegis might definitely be worth it, especially since she just used the buyback. Probably doesn't want to risk using it again. Wars being placed up the high ground. Scouts out only this though. And a bit of this. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Every little bit helps, right? In the meantime, Enigma continuing to farm. What else can you do at this stage of the game? Wait until Ninja Boogie is ready to take a the team on five on one, right? Ninja Boogie, who's got himself a uh, Demon's Edge going just for pure damage right now. Regeneration. Which is odd to see because illusions don't take over pure damage, I believe, only stats. We have the Gold Graph in favor of poor departure purely because of previous fight, of course. It is only uh, 6 go 6k gold though. And 6k gold, 44 minutes in, not that much. Experience Graph is uh, two 20k experience in favor of first departure. And it, I mean, it looks to be in favor of them, etc. But it's. We all know how a Phantom Lancer works, and we all know that this game could still be going both sides. Roshan, going the way of first departure. And once again, I see again people join since the last time I said this. This is game number two of a best out of three for the semi finals for Ghost of Cup Asia number four. First game was taken by first departure. Uh, the winner of this match will be up against the winner of the other semi-finals, which was uh, Zenith versus Rattlesnake. And I do believe Zenith took the win there. As I just saw in the chat, I believe. And they are gonna have to wait until we are done, of course. Blinkin' Lasso! It is the Sand King! And the Sand King goes down, Blinkin' Echo Slam! Queen of Pain, Trouble! Goes down as well, Phantom Lancer Solution doing that BKB! Used by the Enigma, but didn't find anybody to take down. But still, two kills going the way of them, and the Roshan going down still though. It was the Roshan that got picked up by the Luna still, so she has the ages. There is a buyback on the Queen of Pain, and it looks like she has to use it too. Because this, this is looking trouble. And there's a buyback. As uh, the tier 3 tower. Taking a lot of damage here. Power Slot will go through, Illuminate as well. Shackle doesn't latch. They should try to go in on this though. 
And are they not wanting to? They want to take the fight outside the base. This is what they were waiting for. Fuss fight and Calypso going to through though. Windrunner in our trouble. Sonic Blade from the side. Earthshaker down. Enigma down. Deep fight gone. And it's also the Batrider and the Crystal Maiden that dropped two dual kills, two double kills. Gone away at departure. And now they're fighting up against Ninja Boogie, but he will drop as well. And that's the team wipe. Monster kill streak for the Windrunner. And that is just. I oh my god, how can that happen? No black hole. And that is exactly what they were needing. They were too hesitant. If they went in there, if they went into that base and just landed a black hole on at least two, maybe three people, they might be able to take a BKB black hole. At the same time, we know that the BKB probably was still off cooldown, uh, on cooldown, because of the BKB that was uh, used for nothing. And in the meantime, first departure, they'll try to use this to push into the base of Neolution. And this will be a tier 3 tower and it looks to be even racked because buyback status, as you can see it for yourself, there's no buyback on the illusion and they're actually gonna rotate, they need to get more, they think, more is better. And they are gonna go for the next tier 3, they picked up the, ra the melee barracks, range barracks will be taken care of but game is tough. And uh, they will be taking two sets of racks here with the now people being back up, Fisher lining through Illuminate will make sure that uh, there's no creep waves to take care of though and they will be taking this set of racks as well. Will they back off? They're still 30 seconds without the Phantom Lancer, but they do TP away because they can't go for the next set of racks. There's still a tower up on the, the bottom lane, which will be uh, taken care of by Miracle. And this one fight is all it took. One fight is all it took. First departure ahead. Now definitely, it is their game to throw. It is their game to give away. And it looks like we might actually have only two games instead of three. I was kind of expecting three. Maybe still. Ninja Boogie can still surprise a Sonic Wave going through Echo Slam and here comes the black hole and hits on three and that is gonna be three dead as well. The team fight that we were waiting for happens. The Aegis is back up though. Miracle gonna be able to pick up at least the Earthshaker. Is she gonna be able to do more man fighting Ninja Boogie? Ninja Boogie the one to get away surprisingly so. The Satanic is already on cooldown. Illuminate flying through as well. Frostbite keeps Luna in place. And she will try to get away. Will she be able to do so? Tower still hitting, but she should be fine. Super fast as she is. They don't get anything on the bottom lane. No racks, no tower. But they do get away. And that is something to say for them as well. Especially after that massive team fight going the way of the Neolution. Crystal Maiden even got a double kill for that one, I believe. Yep, Queen of Pain and Sand King going down to the hand of the, of the Crystal Maiden. But that team fight definitely, or team fight, that fight in total, I mean, taking two sets of racks. That is in favor of the first departure. And even with, the, I mean, with Luna not dying, that's definitely in their favor as well. We have got a, uh, a Mugga King Bar up on the Phantom Lancer. They need that, though, because they need that to get through that butterfly. They need to be able to kill that Luna. That Luna is, is just, you know, rampant right now. She's on 4,100 gold. Can buy back again if she needs to. Three heroes actually of first departure can buy back. So even if the illusion can force their way into the base of first departure, they still have to deal with more heroes than just five, basically uh, eight, because they uh, can't uh, can uh, can buy back. We also now have a buyback up on Ninja Boogie though. So next set of racks, if they go for that, that won't be that easy either, unless Ninja Boogie already spent his gold, which might be the case. But we'll see how that's gonna go. Uh, as we do see first departure, not wanting to wait anymore and gonna go towards that bottom lane. They have four heroes on this bottom lane. Fifth is incoming with the Queen of Pain slightly behind, but he's gonna blink himself towards that bottom lane. And gonna force everybody of the illusion to be back on that bottom lane as well. Quick look at the graphs. We have 1500 gold in favor of Neolution with 220k experience in favor of first departure. Oh, in favor of first departure. Wow, my bad. That's a team fight. Bam, four, five heroes dead. Team wipe. Experience graph uh, a bit of a less of a drop, and that's also because of the heroes levels. So I'll take a look at this graph. Heroes levels is mostly in favor of first departure. Yes, the Phantom Lancer is level 25, and um, so for killing off him, they will get a lot of experience. But the rest doesn't give that much experience. You have to take that into consideration. As we still have our Crystal Main level 15, she only died nine times, only in Queen Captations thingies. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how First Departure is going to be dealing with this because I'm, I mean, with that MKB, he at least is able to take care of, of the, uh, of the uh, Luna again. If it's going to be enough, it's going to be the question. Look at the net worth difference, 10k gold difference in favor of, uh, of Luna alone. Oh, Ninja Boogie. <laughs> ah! 
I don't know what Queen of Bay was thinking. It's like, hey guys, look what I got. I got a, I got a sheep stick. Here you go, have it. It's on cooldown for half a minute though. That's quite long. Windrunner also has a sheep stick though, so it might be uh, just mind games making them a bit more confident for 30 seconds. Might give them the opportunity to go in. In the meantime, Luna is actually on the mid lane, gonna try to push that lane back. They wanna, of course, have the situation where you have all lanes pushed in towards your opponent's base, and then you go in because you have some people... You wait until the point where they have to defend their other lanes, and then you go in because then they have to choose, and then they get messed up, and then they might not have the perfect positioning, and they might not all be there. You might be able to pick someone up before the fight actually starts. So that's, uh, that's the intention, of course, as uh, we do have... Um, What's he doing? By himself. They're gonna fight this. Lasso up on lobby. Here comes a black hole. It's only on the Queen of Pain though. Burrow strike from the Sand King. Sand King might still die here. Will indeed still die. As the Echo Slam comes in. Sand King dies. It's the only one so far. Queen of Pain actually able to get away. I thought she died, but she's still alive. Windrunner, not so lucky. In the meantime, the Ninja Boogie taking it up uh, against the Luna. Was able to, uh, to do some damage to the tier fours. It might not be get get taking them down, but look at this. This is so annoying already. You can imagine one more fight is all it takes, and and yeah, everybody being summoned back. Shackle latches Urshaker to a creep. Power shots going through. Illuminate as well. They will be able to pick him up. Should be able to pick him up. There he goes. Creeps helping out as Urshaker buys back. We have Miracle still on full HP and mana though. 7.7k gold. Pretty pretty damn tanky. Well, out of mana though, which is quite annoying because of those ninja boogie illusions. In the meantime, no split pushing for now for uh, for Phantom Lancer. What he could be doing is send his Manta style illusions out to, to push out. And that would actually be very nice because then you actually have a chance to uh, to create extra illusions. And of course, uh, maybe even let the creep wave reach the base of the opponent team. Even though there's of course Mega Creep, so it will be a bit more tricky to do. But, you know, Boots of Travel could be helping out there as well. But he doesn't have those. He's got 4600 gold. And uh, no boots of travel. He did pick up his uh, Talisman of Evasion, so we'll be going for a butterfly. And as long as there's no MKB yet in the opposing team, that could be a big item for him to get. But he also doesn't want to give the power of buyback. Uh, which is this crap. He does have a buyback right now, so has got that safety net. Two minutes until Roshan is back up. 6,800 gold up on the Luna. There we go. I was gonna say she just lost a chunk of her gold, but it's in a it's in a so grass. This is one of the most fat lunas that I've ever seen. She does take a bit of damage from trying to take down those illusions, though. And the keeper of life will at least be able to give uh, mana every single time, and then the, those are the fusel blade illusions, mana drain miracle of uh, mana, mana drain them of mana. Boom. But yeah, one more fight might be all it takes. And I'm not even saying that the fight has to have be a 5-on-5 five five fight. Because as we just saw, that Luna might be able to take down the base by herself. And to be fair, I kind of like it. It's like carry versus carry somewhere on the base. And then the rest of the team is 4 versus 4 outside the base. We've got Sand King. He's got himself a Veil of Discord. So more magical damage going through. Sonic Wave will, of course, profit from that also. Very nice to have. Eclipse, even though I can't really assume that Miracle is going to be in that fight. And they want to try to take down a Roshan. At least have a chance to. And they have to be very careful, because the one thing that you cannot do when you are uh, barracks behind is uh, leave your base for too long a period of time. Nova still hits. What is he doing? He's too still. Lasso! He was just waiting for the Lasso! And a pause, he disconnected. I was gonna say, oh, that is so sad. I think he's dead. <laughs> that is the worst time for a disconnect ever. I'm not sure if he would have survived otherwise anyway. Well, he's back, but you know, it's, it's a bit sad. Oh, 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 hey, first strike, but he's, uh, he's dusted up the, yeah. In the meantime, Queen of Pain pushing bottom though. Uh, so what I was gonna say is that you can't leave your base for too long a period of time because the lanes will be pushing in. <clears throat> and it will be annoying. Radiance middle tower and hello middle Illusions tower. of Miracle. Hello 66 HP tower tier 4. Wasn't even the real one. And now he gets called back towards the uh, Keeper of the Light. 
And they could go for Roshan if they wanted to. There's no item slot on the Luna though, they ha it has to go to someone else. The ward is there of course on the Radiant side, so they do realize that. But I don't think they really care, I think they think, you know, well, we can take that fight. But maybe Neolution considers this their last chance, because if there's gonna be an Aegis up on the opponent opposing team, which there is, this might be game. Queen of Pain that gets the Aegis once again. Leaks himself away as the Blinken comes in, it's a Windrunner. The game is tough! Frostbite there as well, as Enigma gets turned into a pick, and here comes the Eclipse, Echo Slam still there, though, and the Black Hole catches on three! A lot of damage going through, there were three heroes already down! Luna getting a double kill already though, and it is a man fight once more, but this time Luna, trouble! And they will go down, Queen of Pain with the Sonic Wave coming in too late! Byrak from the Luna, Age is being popped, Phantom Lance are able to get himself out in time. And that fight happened with the lanes being pushed out. A good fight, great fight by Neolution. That's the kind of fights that they should be having though, next time maybe Ninja Buki will be a bit higher HP. Ninja Buki, who still has his who still has his uh, buyback. Malif is up on the Luna. No more buyback on Miracle. If they kill him now, this might be also trouble. Epicent Epicenter Burst like coming in. Miracle still alive. Hello, Satanic! And that's gonna be Enigma going down as well. No escape, no black hole. Satanic MVP for Luna right now. I really thought she was done for. Buyback from Ninja Buki comes in as well. Looks like the bottom lane is gonna be the target here. Poor first departure with only Ninja Boogie alive though. Can he really do something to stop this from happening? I don't think so. Looks like first departure is on the road to taking their second game against Neolution. Finally getting revenge from the best of the three that they lost earlier two weeks ago. And they will be getting the tier three, tier fours as well. Mega creeps are there as well. Burrow strike up on some support. Sonic Wave going through. The veil of Discord a bit too late, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I think. Ninja Boogie coming in, trying to stop Miracle from taking anything, and he actually has to back off. Base is still down to half HP though. And there's no mana to stop, there's no mana. Oh, Air Shakers. Stop shaking. He's dead. <laughs> In case you didn't notice that. First right up on the Queen of Pain. Trouble for him, as we have Ninja Boogie being turned into a piglet, being shackled to a dead creep, and that will be Ninja Boogie dying as well. No more buyback this time. And this time the barracks will die, and this time it is first departure that uh, calls the GG, gets called the GG. We have got the finals between first departure and Zenith in the finals best out of three. We do also have a best out of three for the third place decider. I'm not sure if they're going to be happening at the same time or if we're going to be seeing both of them uh, after each other. We will be seeing at least the finals though, so stick around for that. My name is Shiver. I am a, uh, I'm a caster. Uh, Obvious, it's obvious. I'm face popping my microphone. So, um, or face bumping. Anyway, um, if you want to support me, you can subscribe to my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Shiver Gaming. Uh, Facebook and Twitter also are all under the name of Shiver Gaming. So, twitter.com slash Shiver Gaming, Facebook.com slash Shiver Gaming. If you want to support me on Twitch, you can do that also either by following or subscribing or turning off adblock or all of the above. And, um, anyways, uh, stick around. We'll be right back with uh, more games coming up. Don't go anywhere.